Hello children, welcome to AMC India's online classes. In today's video, from physics subject, motion topic we are going to discuss. So, if you observe this uh, video children, if you observe this video, so all the objects are falling onto the earth. So all the objects are falling onto the earth. From top they are all falling onto the earth. What may be the reason? Because here the earth will be having a nature called gravity. Property. It will be having a property called gravity or it will show gravitational force which tries to attract all the objects. Means because of force because of force, motion is created in the objects. Because of force, some kind of motion is created in the objects. So, so actually motion is caused by force. So when motion is caused because of force, what changes we will observe? What changes we will observe? because of force, if it is already in a rest position, because of force, it will move. The body, it will move. Already if it is in rest position, because of force, it will move. So, or if you take the example of cricket game, so the ball coming from the batsman after hitting, so we can catch it. We can catch it with our hands. So it will stop, means if it is already in motion, if it is already in motion like cricket ball, we can stop it, means we can uh, make it come under rest. Or if you take a, if you take the example of sponge, if you take the example of sponge, so what you can do, you can squeeze it and you can change the shape, you can squeeze it and you can change the shape. So like this, whenever we apply force on a body, it may create motion or it may stop motion or it may change the shape. Like that so many effects may happen in that motion also one kind of effect caused by the force, caused by the force. So the branch of physics which deals with effect of force on objects particularly regarding motion is called mechanics, is called mechanics. So this uh, branch of mechanics again classified into two categories. One is uh, statics, another one is dynamics. So here statics means, so branch of physics which deals with the objects at rest under the action of forces. Suppose you are having a block you are having a block, you are having a big block here. You are trying to apply force, you are trying to apply force and you are trying to move it forward, but still it is not moving, it is under rest only, it is under rest position only. So the, you are applying force, but the block is not moving, it is under rest position. So in that condition, studying about the about this body which is under rest under the action of force is called statics so the branch of mechanics which deals with objects which are under rest under the action of force it is called statics suppose if the block starts moving if the block starts moving if the block starts moving if movement, if you observe in the block, so then studying about that objects under motion is called dynamics. So studying about objects under the effect of force is called mechanics. But after applying force, if the object is under rest, then it is called statics. If the object is under motion, then studying about is called dynamics. Like this in mechanics, we have two branches. 
one is statics another one is dynamics <coughs> so next so this dynamics branch again can be classified into two categories again can be classified into two categories one is kinematics another one is kinetics kinematics kinetics so kinematics means it deals with the motion of the objects without bothering about the cause of motion means if a body is there if a body is there we have applied applied force because of that what changes we can observe before that before applying force the body may be in position because of force the body's position will change or the body's speed will change that speed will change in some time because speed is changed we can tell that it is showing acceleration change of speed is called acceleration change of speed is called acceleration like that we can observe so many changes studying about all these changes excluding force without bothering about force is called kin kinematics means for create motion in the body we have to apply force once motion started we will come across so many terms like position speed time distance displacement acceleration like that so many terms we will come across studying about all the terms which are involved in motion except the force is called kinematics except the force is called kinematics about the reason it won't study but because of that reason what changes are happening that it will study in the branch we can study it is called kinematics next kinetics kinetics means it deals with the motion of objects considering the cause of their motion if we study about the cause also which is the cause here for motion force is the cause along with the motion of objects if we study the cause also then it is called kinetics then it is called kinetics so here in this chapter we will come across a point object so suppose a block or anything is there so object means we consider any kind of object as a point object point object means point object means suppose i have a block block of a length 10 cm if it has moved 100 meters the distance moved by the body is 100 meters compared to 100 meters the length of the object 10 cm is very 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 less here 10 cm means length of the object this uh, block will have length breadth height mass volume area like that it can have so many quantities if the these are all called dimensions of the objects if the dimensions of the object are if the dimension of the objects are negligible negligible as compared to distance travel by it as compared to this this uh, distance or the measurement with which we are comparing compared to that if the dimensions are very very less or negligible then this object is considered to be a point object point object in uh, all our problems or all of the all over this chapter whatever object we mention about mentions about that will be a point object that will be a point object means whose dimensions like length breadth thickness are negligible as compared to distance traveled by it okay children next so here rest and motion so what is rest actually means we have applied force we have applied force but still the object there is no change in the position of the object with respect to a fixed point around it so then it will be said to be under rest here a book lying on table with respect to book 
with respect to table with respect to table the book is under rest because its position is always same on the table on one particular position it has been placed its position is not changing so compared to table with respect to table the book is under rest or tree in a garden tree in a garden compared to this road or compared to a person who is walking on the road compared to him the tree will be in rest position because when he entered into the garden for walking from that time until he finishes his walking until that time there is no change in the position of the tree so that's why we can tell that it is under rest means any object or body will be at rest if it does not change its position with respect to fixed point with respect to fixed point or any object moving object the moving object may move but this tree position will not move next motion a body is said to be in motion if it changes its position with respect to fixed objects around it then it will be said to be in motion so railway uh, train moving on a railway track with respect to person standing on the platform the train is moving the train will be moving or the children's running in the park according to this uh, spectators means other people according to other people the children they are moving or according to children if they hit the hit the ball the ball will be moving so like that motion means if it changes its position with respect to fixed objects so then it is said to be in motion it is said to be in motion so here rest and motion so rest means said to be at rest does not change its position with respect to surrounding surroundings with the passage of time time is changing but position is not changing so motion means <coughs> position changes continuously with respect to surroundings or with respect to observer with the passage of time so this is about rest and motion so if we compare this paragraph we know that earth is rotating about its axis and revolving around the sun revolving around the sun so the stationary objects like your classroom tree lamp lamp post do not change their position with respect to each other they are at rest actually as we uh, because your classroom tree lamp post all are situated on the earth all are situated on the earth means one observer one observer for me children suppose this is the earth so on the earth we are observing the position of a on me children so we are on me children so we are on the earth suppose we are on the earth so this is our classroom this is our classroom or some what any building this is our classroom so one observer is observing the classroom or observing the lamp post like street light a post lamp post or he is observing one tree he is observing one tree which are situated on the earth a person who is lying on the earth who is lying on the earth he is observing his classroom 
lamp post tree for him according to this observer according to this observer o1 so they are all under rest they are all under rest but if we observe from another another planet or somewhere else out of the earth out of the earth from there if one observer is observing the position of all these objects so then earth is not a uh, object which is under rest it is moving object earth is a moving object earth is rotating around itself and also revolving around the sun according to the observer observer who is outside for him the tree will be moving the lamp post will be moving the classroom will be moving even this observer o1 also will be moving so same kind of object according to observer first observer they may be under rest according to second observer they may be in motion means here the words rest and motion here the words rest and motion are not absolute are not fixed they are relative they change from observer to observer they change from observer to observer so here observer to observer so means um observer so if an observer is situated outside the earth suppose in spaceship according to him classroom trees everything will be in motion so all motions are relative terms there is nothing absolute there is nothing fixed if you move book in your hand so book is not moving with respect to you book is not moving with respect to you but according to other observer book will be moving okay according to your hand it is going along with the, your hand according to with respect to hand it is not moving but with respect to eyes the book will be moving with hand and eye if the observer is hand it is not moving because it is along with the hand if the observer is eye according to eye it is moving like that also we can take so here suppose these two persons they are traveling in parachute according to and the person a he is on earth person b c they are in parachute according to this this boy this person a both of them are moving but according to person b person c and is under rest according to person c person b under rest so this rest and motion or relative terms rest and motion or relative terms means they depend on observer based on observer they may be in rest or they may be in motion next so that's why so whenever we are observing the things or whenever whenever we are observing the motion we have to think like a science student so to the passengers in a moving bus or train for all the passengers in moving bus or train trees buildings or people on the road sides road sides they are observe that the passengers in a on so the passengers in moving bus they observe, observe that trees buildings people on the road side they are all moving or outside people they feel that the inside people they are moving inside people who are in bus or train they are moving bus they are moving at the same time what about each passenger how do they think according to them the fellow passengers fellow passengers are not moving are not moving because the distance between them is not changing okay so the outside people think that all the passengers are moving forward but the people who are inside the bus for according to him the co passenger is not moving so okay so that's why we can tell that motion is relative motion is relative 
Next. So this is a this is one kind of flat car, one kind of a flat car, flat car. Suppose one observer is outside, one observer is outside. So here this is a man's motion, man's motion. So this is a man and the flat car. this man and flat car because this flat car is moving forward flat car means without having any this uh, top top portion flat car it is moving in forward direction the man is uh, moving in backward direction the observer who is outside he will observe the relative motion of these two relative motion of these two relative motion of these two okay relative motion of these two because uh, these two are moving in opposite direction so here he is here because flat car is moving after some time he may he might be here flat car is moving forward after some time he might be here so he he will not only observe this uh, uh, this flat car's motion along with that he can also observe the relative motion of this flat car and man next so here one observer is uh, outside the car suppose if a pendulum is there if the pendulum is fixed if the pendulum is fixed so what he will do he will observe only the motion of the pendulum he will observe only the motion of the pendulum because it is fixed at one place fixed but here as the car is moving forward and the person is moving backward here he will observe relative motion of the man next one about scalars and vectors so the physical quantities physical quantities means the quantities which can be measured the quantities which can be measured like temperature is a physical quantity mass is a physical quantity so volume is a physical quantity like amount of substance or luminous intensity all si quantities all international system quantities so all are physical quantities means the quantities which can be measured are considered as physical quantities so physical quantities are classified into scalars and vectors scalars and vectors here scalars means the quantities which are having only magnitude magnitude means suppose if we say 10 meter so here 10 is a numerical value meter is a unit the combination of numerical value and unit is called magnitude numerical value and unit is called magnitude means scalar quantities they will have only magnitude they will have only value but no direction because suppose if you want to measure temperature or if you want to measure time for measuring time how we can tell 10 seconds this is enough no need of 10 second towards east 10 seconds towards west like that no need to describe no need of direction for describing the quantity time so so they will have only magnitude like distance speed mass time temperature density work energy power these are all the quantities which which have only value or magnitude so but vector means they will they will be described with the help of both magnitude and direction without direction they are meaningless so displacement displacement means we have to tell the direction because 
if we suppose if we start from here we went 3 meters towards east 3 meter towards east next we went 4 meters towards north what is our displacement what is our what will be our displacement from starting point to ending point this will be our displacement this means 3 4 this uh, as it is uh, this is right angle triangle this value will be 5 so the displacement is 5 meters towards northeast because we are going this is north this is east we are going like this at 45 degrees angle between east and north so that's why our displacement is 5 meters towards northeast if you won't tell the direction if you won't tell the direction the person instead of here if you tell north west the person will be here if you tell south west the person will be here south east the person will be here based on the direction the person position will change so that's why for uh, describing quantities like displacement we need direction compulsorily otherwise we will get wrong assumptions so displacement velocity acceleration linear momentum force about all these quantities we are going to learn children these are all quantities are called vectors because along with magnitude they need the help of direction for describing them <coughs> next so vector means any directed line segment is a vector it will be having three characteristics so one is base support second one is length third one is sense means support means base length means magnitude sense means direction if it has these three quantities then it is called as a vector and one more thing it should follow some geometrical laws suppose we are uh, we went to market we want to buy sugar one kg sugar first we have bought one kg sugar next uh, two kg wheat flour how many total how many how much weight we are weighing one plus two kg three kg so normal algebraic addition with the help of uh, scalars these are mass is a scalar we can add normally like normal numbers but for adding vectors not algebraic laws not algebraic laws algebraic law algebraic laws we have we have to follow some geometric laws so then if geometric laws are applicable then only it is called as a vector then only it is called as a vector okay children so vector means the direction from a to b so this is a body is moving like this a body is moving like this so the direction from a to b denoted by a b bar a b bar the direction from b to a denoted by b a bar b a bar a b bar b a bar so this uh, modulus of a b bar it's a modulus of vector which gives length of the vector magnitude of the vector without direction a b bar means it's a vector with magnitude and direction modulus of a b bar means only the magnitude no direction if you want to find length of vector or magnitude of vector we have to make use of modulus we have to make use of modulus of a vector so if a physical quantity if it has magnitude and direction it does not mean that it is a vector because for it to be a vector for if a suppose if a if this is a vector if this is a vector if this is a vector or if this is a one minute if this is a vector it should be able to resolve into mutually perpendicular directions like uh, in 90 degrees like this 
90 degrees like this. Suppose if the vector is y, it should be able to resolve to x, z such that the angle between x, y and z should be 90 degrees. Means x is perpendicular to y between y and z angle should be 90, z and x angle should be 90, z and x angle should be 90. Like that, if they are mutually perpendicular, if the vector is able to resolve into two more perpendicular components, mutually perpendicular components, or we can take in, in this way, uh, if this is a vector, if this is a vector, this is one component, this is one component whose, sorry children, uh, don't consider previous example, consider this example, if this is a vector, so in this, in x direction, vx, in y direction, vy, such that vx and vy perpendicular to each other. In this way, if a vector is able to be replaced like uh, perpendicular components, we are removing vector. Instead of vector, we are taking its components, x component and y component, which are mutually perpendicular. So, then it will be a vector. Along with having magnitude and direction, it should be resolved into mutually perpendicular directions. That is one condition and they should follow certain geometric laws of vector addition. So, then only it will be a vector. Otherwise, it is not a vector. Okay, children, what we have learned today? So, what we have learned today about mechanics means it's study about uh, study of motion about because of force. Two categories: statistics, dynamics. Statistics means only about motion. Sorry, motion of objects under rest. Dynamics means uh, objects which are moving. About that, it will discuss. Again, dynamics two types: kinematics, kinetics. Kinematics means uh, only studying about motion, not about cause. Kinetics means studying about both uh, cause and motion. Point objects means dimensions are comparable, sorry, negligible. Dimensions are negligible, very, very small when compared to distance traveled by it. So, rest motion. Rest means no change in position. Motion means changes its position. Rest and motion are relative terms. Rest and motion are relative terms. According to one observer, they may be in motion. According to another observer, they may be under rest. So, they are called relative terms. They are not absolute. So, sometimes, sometimes the observers may observe relative motion. When the when he is observing observing one object which is moving on another object, so then he will be able to observe relative motion because of these two. Next scalar vector means scalar means they will have only magnitude, no direction. Vectors means they will be having both magnitude and direction. Along with that, they should be able to resolve into mutually perpendicular directions, they should follow some geometric laws. So, our today's concept children regarding uh, displacement and distance, displacement and distance. So, if you observe this picture, if you observe this picture, so this is the school and this is the house from the school the one student after completing his school uh, he want to go to his house so how he is going this is the road from 
uh, school to house. So after completion of school, along this uh, road, towards right side, towards north, again towards east, towards north, towards west, towards north. So along this uh, path, along this path, the boy is going to his house. Going to his house. Okay. This is the original path. Whatever this road is there, this is the original path traveled by the boy. Original path traveled by the boy. And this is called distance. This is called distance. This is called distance. Means the length of the original path. The length of the original path is called distance. But is it is it the shortcut route to his house? Because he, he is going through the road. If there is any facility available or if there is any shortcut like this from schools to house direct like this if there is any there is any shortcut so this boy will prefer to go along this uh, shortest path instead of this because distance means length of the actual path from starting point one more children so from his uh, school to his house if there is any shortest possible path, then he will try to go through that path because he will reach the house in fast manner compared to this uh, total path. Compared to this total path. Why means shortest path from the school starting point, let it be A, to final point house, let it be B. Let it be B. So the this shortest possible path is different from the actual path. So this is called displacement. So whenever uh, we consider a journey or a change of position from between one point to another point, there may be uh, so many kinds of path between two points. One may go like this, one may go like this, one may go like this. Like that, different persons may travel through different paths. But the path in which they are going, that is called distance. And the shortest possible path from starting point to ending point, if there is a, if we draw a straight line like this, so this will be called displacement. Okay. So, uh, displacement is covered by the same boy. Distance is covered by the same boy, but distance means actual path, displacement means shortest possible path. Okay, so whenever we are uh, going through some, uh, we are shifting our position from one place to another place. Regarding the shifting, we will come across two words one is distance, another one is displacement. What is the difference? Distance is total path covered. Displacement is shortest available path. Regarding distance, the boy is not following different direction. Once first he is going towards east, then north, then east, then north, then west, then north. During the distance, the direction is changing continuously. So distance is a scalar quantity. It does not have any direction. It will be having only magnitude. But whereas displacement is going along a straight line, so means it is having a particular direction. So displacement here is a vector. Displacement is here a vector. Okay. So like that, during the motion of the body, we will come across two words, two physical quantities, distance and displacement. So whereas if you observe this circle, if you observe this circle, if you observe this circle, the journey started from point A, point A, from point A, suppose 
it traveled up to point B. So, any object is traveling from A to B. So, this is the original curve along which the object is traveling. So, this length of this curve, length of this curve AB is called distance. AB is called distance whose uh, value is total perimeter is 2 pi r, perimeter of circle is 2 pi r, but he has he has covered only, but the object has covered only half, half circle. So, 2 pi r by 2, 2 to cancel pi r. Pi r is the distance traveled by the object from point A to point B. So, A is called initial position, B is called final position. Is there any shortest possible path between A and B? Shortest possible path means we have to draw a straight line connecting both. Connecting both. This is the shortest possible path. So, what is the length of this shortest possible path? From the center point of circle, this side radius r, this side also radius r, r plus r, 2r will be the displacement. So, distance is pi r. Displacement is 2r. Displacement is 2r. So, whereas, suppose if a person from point A, he is going in straight line, he came up to point B, he is going in straight line. So, then as he is going in straight line, in this case, distance also AB, displacement also AB. So, displacement or as a displacement is a vector, we can represent it by S bar. S bar means displacement. Displacement always less than or equal to distance. Yes. Less than or equal to distance. Yes. Okay. So, these are about distance and displacement children. So, let us uh, see there, see the important points. So, distance means length of the path is called distance. Its SI unit is meter, CGS unit is centimeter. It is a scalar quantity. So, it is having dimensional formula. So, dimensional formula means, suppose we have length there, distance is nothing but length. Normally, we have mass, length, time. These three are the fundamental quantities. These three are the fundamental quantities. So, dimensional formula means in the formula of distance, mass we have how many quantities? In length there is no mass, zero quantities. Length how many quantities? So, length only one quantity. Time how many quantities? Zero quantities. So, this m1, m0, l1, t0 is the dimensional formula of distance. So, dimensional formula means, so we have to represent mass, length, time, how many times they are present in the quantity. So, that is called dimensional formula. Here we have only length here, distance is its a length actually. So, only length we are having, mass is 0, time is 0. Okay, m0, l1, t0 is the dimensional formula for distance. So, what about displacement? Displacement means it is a vector quantity because displacement means shortest possible path. Shortest possible path, it will be straight line, direction will be along the straight line. So, it is a vector quantity. Its magnitude means its value is equal to length between initial position and final position. Its direction will be from initial position to final position like a straight line its SI unit meter and its uh, CGS unit centimeter. Units are same. Units are same. Next. So, let us see there. Let us compare. Let us uh, uh, compare the distance and displacement, two quantities. Let us compare. So, here yeah, distance means length of the path, length of the path traveled by a body, total length of the path. Displacement is shortest distance between initial position and final position. 
So, distance is a scalar quantity. Displacement is a vector quantity. So, distance means always positive. Distance, because we are going, 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 we can come back. But distance can never be negative. Total how much length we have traveled. It is positive only. But what about displacement? If you go front, if go if you go in forward direction, positive. If you come back in backward direction, negative. If you come back to same position, starting from A, going somewhere, coming back to same position, it will be zero. So displacement can be positive, negative, or zero. Positive, negative, or zero. But distance is always positive. So here. So total distance means sum of all distances in different directions. So first they went north, next they went, uh, sorry, they went east, next they went uh, north, east, north, next they went west, next they came down, south. So in this direction how much? In this direction how much? Here how much? Here how much? Total we have to add. That algebraic sum is called distance. Distance in different directions, all sum we have to take. Okay. But whereas displacement means the net displacement means net displacement means vector sum. It is the vector sum of individual displacements. Means if you go forward, positive. If you come back, negative. Like that, according to direction, positive negative values will come. According to that, we have to add net displacement. But here, no need of uh, vector sum. It is algebraic sum. It does not depend on direction. Just adding the numbers, that's all. But here it is a vector sum. Adding the numbers along with the direction. That is important here. Adding, adding the numbers along with the direction. Okay. Next. So, whenever there is a motion, there will be distance. But when a body comes back to original position or initial position, displacement will be zero. In displacement, suppose it went forward 4 meters, it came backward 4 meters. What is the distance covered? 4 plus 4, 8. We have to add both. But whereas displacement going forward plus 4, coming backward minus 4, cancel, zero displacement like that. So, distance can never be zero when it is in motion, but displacement can be zero if it come back to initial, initial position. It's a SI unit is meter, SI unit is meter, CGS unit is centimeter, CGS unit is centimeter. So, in this way we can compare distance and displacement. Okay, children, that's all for today. So, thank you for watching our video. Please subscribe our channel and press the bell icon for receiving latest updates. Thank you children. Have a good day.